I'll pro I would promise to be brief, but I might break that promise. When I came to the Senate six years ago, I, I brought with me a rather serious interest in water quality matters in the state. It's an issue that's in our newspapers often, and it always seems to be somewhat one-sided. And I was rejoicing the fact that some people here that hear these words are now leaving because I think another voice needs to be heard on that. There's a lady that works here in the Capitol that I think every year in the last six years has stopped me and said, Senator, I'm from out of town, but I work here. My grandkids live in Des Moines. They drink water from the Des Moines Water Works, and I, I'm worried about it. I drink bottled water when I'm here because I'm worried about the water quality. And I've tried for six years to reassure her. But you know all the, what the narrative is. Our water quality in Iowa is terrible and it's getting worse. And I've told groups ever since I've been in the Senate that that's simply not true. Our water quality is fine and it's slowly getting, be slowly getting better. And I can document that any number of ways. But I always follow with these words, but we have to keep working on it. The nature of Iowa, the nature of our rich soils and abundant rainfall means that we will always be battling nutrient loss into our rivers and streams and lakes. But my goal when I got here was to seek out the truth. I believe that public policy is only is best done under the light of truth, not with emotion and half-truth and misrepresentations. About four years ago, I read a, an editorial in the Des Moines Register that really caught my eye. It's written by a man I didn't know, but I was really interested in what he had to say. He, he identified himself as an environmental engineer. So I sought him out, and soon he sent me a 40-page document that he had written. As it turns out, his name's Bob. As it turns out, he had worked for the DNR for 30 years as an environmental engineer. He was largely involved with water contamination issues, especially groundwater. He authored the groundwater portion of the 1985 state water plan and was the primary person behind the health-based statewide standards uh, in Chapter 137 of the DNR rules. He has also conducted numerous field investigations involving water contamination and worked with many businesses, communities, attorneys, environmental consultants, regulators in other states, and with the EPA. So I hope you have the picture of a 30-year veteran of working with all sides of groundwater and surface water matters in the state of Iowa. He sent me this 40-page document he'd written after retirement, and I read it. I learned more about water quality in Iowa than I had ever read before or heard before. And then he recommended that I visit with someone else. And I'm going to read you Bob's words in that email to me four years ago. He said, there's a person who knows water quality in the state better than anyone else, in my opinion. He is my friend and former colleague, John. John was an environmental scientist with the DNR for 31 years. His job included assessing all of the state's surface waters. If the surface water is classified as being impaired, John is probably the one who made that determination. John is also a fish expert and has conducted a substantial amount of related in, uh, in, in field stream work throughout the in stream field work throughout the state. He knows the state's surface waters inside and out. Now we're getting the heart of my message today to, to this body, but also to others that are, are listening, especially to those young people in this room that don't remember what it used to be like in Iowa, and I'll, I'll come back to that later. 
But here's what uh, Bob wrote about John. In my discussion with him over many years, I know that John's opinions do not coincide with the politically correct positions that saturate the news. In a nutshell, huge improvements have been made to Iowa's waters as a result of uh, municipal industrial wastewater treatment required by the 1972 Clean Water Act. Water quality in Iowa is far from the worst it's ever been, is not getting worse, and does not deserve being called the nation's worst. Those are the words of John. I met with John and Bob Tuesday afternoon again, just down the street here. I wanted to visit with them. We've kind of become friends. And I wanted permission from them to use their words, and they gave me that. I didn't identify their last names. If you want to come and talk to me and go visit with John and Bob, I'll bet they'd be glad to do it. I found them very accessible. I have found them extremely knowledgeable, very helpful. And just for the record, Tuesday, one of them smiled and says, Ken, you know that we're both Democrats, don't you? I didn't know that, really didn't care. It was their expertise, their experience, their knowledge that always drew me to them. But I want to read those words again. John says, water quality in Iowa is far from the worst it's ever been, is not getting worse and does not deserve being called the nation's worst. For the young people in the room, I grew up in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, I know, I'm old. In the 50s and 60s, Senator Johnson wants to talk about CAFOs, confinements. We raised a lot of livestock in the 50s and 60s and 70s, too. Most of them were outside. Some people would like, like the idea of free range. We had millions of animals outside. It doesn't take much of an imagination to figure out where the waste went. Every rainfall event was a giant flushing action in the state of Iowa. I'll let your imagination take, the, take over from there. I'll also read a, a story or the headline from a Des Moines Register article from 1969. This is in reference to the city of Omaha. Back then, there weren't the sewage treatment plants we have today. Here's the, here's the newspaper headline or, or a, a paragraph from that article. There were times when the flow in the Missouri River along the west shore was literally red with blood. Great mats of congealed grease floated downstream for miles and entrails collected in scummy islands. That's what Iowa's water used to be like. And I think everybody can recognize now that it's much better. I'll get on to the parts that need to be fixed in a little bit because of, I'll read some more of John's words later. But I want you to know where we've come from. And I think we've made tremendous strides. A couple of weeks ago, we had Joe Larshide from the DNR give us a presentation on the trout streams in northeast Iowa. Those, those trout streams that became, he told us, uh, started begin, be, uh, getting clouded in the late 1800s, by the way. That wasn't a CAFO problem. That was a, it was a farming problem. But in 1980, he reported that we had, in Iowa, we, in northeast Iowa, we had five trout streams that allowed for the natural, natural, or natural reproduction of trout. Today, we have 80. That's a success, a success story. Our water quality in those streams is far better than it was 30 years ago, 50 years ago, even 100 years ago. These aren't my words. You can check all this out. I'm going to read some more words from John, or from Bob, actually. Another email to me uh, a couple years ago. I talked with John this afternoon. I don't know if I made it clear. John retired last year. He couldn't speak so freely before. He can now. 
I talked with John this afternoon. The misrepresentation of water quality in Iowa's surface waters bothers John a lot. John and I agree that public perception is a major obstacle to practical solutions to water quality problems. The news media has portrayed water quality to be much worse than we believe it to be. It's become almost un-American to suggest water quality is not that bad. It's clear to me that accurately educating the public is needed before practical solutions can be accepted. Let me give you an example of that media. I'm not picking on the guys in this room, but the media reports that we read. This is from the business record. You got it a couple days, or maybe last week. Uh, just read a couple paragraphs. First paragraph says this, the water quality bill passed by the Iowa legislature is a joke. Okay? That's this man's opinion. He goes on to say, the legislators who passed Iowa's clean water bill were what my high school basketball coach called gutless wonders. Players with no plan who lob the ball at the basket whenever they feel like it. Okay? I guess I know what he thinks of me. Doesn't bother me in the least. Toward the end of the article, though, he wrote a, a paragraph, a sentence here that I am still scratching my head over. Maybe some of you guys can help me out with this. He writes this. To slow soil erosion, farmers applied more fertilizer, which also helped crop yields. I think even the non-farmers in here recognize that we don't put fertilizer on the ground to stop erosion. So I don't know about you, but I think this man's credibility to speak on water quality issues has been compromised. But he writes news articles, and my friend here in the Capitol reads that. And she's worried about it. And I'll bet you some young folks in this room that don't know where we used to be are worried about it too. Some more comments from John. Keep in mind, combined 65 years experience working with Iowa waters, fertilizer spills, manure spills, bacteria, you name it, these guys have been working on it, but here's what they say. The water quality expectation of many Iowans is unrealistic. Iowa is a Corn Belt state, and Iowa's surface waters do not have the potential to look like northern Minnesota or mountain streams. They never have. The only bacteria-free water is delivered to our homes and business by our by our drinking water utilities. Folks, that's what they're for. If you think you're going to turn the Des Moines River or the Raccoon or any stream you want to mention into drinking water, bacteria-free, we'll never get there. We never were there and we're never going there. John goes on to say the Missouri River got its name Big Muddy long before it was ever impacted by modern agriculture. Consistently clear stream water is never going to happen in mud bottom streams with steep banks carved through clayey glacial deposits. Stream clarity, however, is often quite good during the extended cool dry periods of summer. That's, I believe, a more accurate assessment of Iowa's, the condition of Iowa's water quality than, frankly, than I read in very many newspapers. And certainly, Senator Johnson, it's a far more balanced view than the uh, people, the people that you've recruited to fill my inbox and my voicemail the last few days. My friends that lectured me earlier in the session about the paltry $27 million a year for water quality and Senator Johnson who said it would do as much good to spit in the river, uh, those are misguided statements. Folks, 
I came here six years ago with an ending fund balance of $927 million. You all remember it. I was in the minority. There was no water quality bill when we had money. There was nothing. So it's hard for me to understand why the people that lecture me for doing, that did nothing, lecture me for doing too little. Senator Johnson, would you yield? Senator Johnson, would you yield? Yes. You're in order, Senator Rosenblum. You've been particularly vocal about the moratorium on CAFOs. That's and you've been very active. Senator. Pardon me? That's incorrect. Please correct me. When have I gotten up and spoken about that before today? You've been very active. To this act chamber. To this chamber. You've mentioned CAFOs a number of times in the moratorium a number of times. But I want you to tell me what passing that moratorium would do for Iowa's waters. How would that help Iowa's waters? There are two bills. One would put a moratorium on new construction only, new construction only, and convene a working group to review the matrix. Until that happens, the moratorium stays in place. How would that the, help? The, 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 uh, the, more, the uh, matrix uh, is a cause of concern. I believe it's failing. I've been here a lot longer than you have, Senator. Senator, Senator I Senator, asked you Senator, a specific Senator, question. How does okay. that help water quality in Iowa? It's to fix the matrix. How the does that one, help water no, quality no, in Iowa? Okay, okay, okay. Senator, be patient. Be patient. That's a mark of a good senator. I've been patient all okay. year, Senator. Yeah, yeah. You've been patiently canceling natural resources meetings like we've canceled agriculture meetings. We could have talked about all these things, but no. The other bill with the moratorium, and I filed them because I was asked to, and I'm sure that about every senator in this chamber has been asked to file that bill. But nobody's gone ahead and done it just to see if it could even get an initial hearing so that, we could, so that we could discuss these things. The other one would require that the number of impaired waters be dropped down to 100. It currently stands at 750 impaired waters that eventually poison the Gulf of Mexico. It's called the dead zone, the Hyper Hyperion zone. I mean, I'm sure it's hypoxic zone. Hypoxic zone, I'm sorry. Where, well, do thank you, Senator. Our, where do you think our soil goes? So, thank you, Senator. You haven't answered my question, but I, I will answer it for you. It will do absolutely nothing. Nutrient, you just brought up the hypoxia zone. Thank you. You can have a seat and put your feet up. The hypoxic zone is a nutrient related issue. I agree. The nutrient reduction strategy is designed to address that. Senate File 512 was designed to support the nutrient reduction strategy. But let's look at the big picture. I thought you might talk about manure flowing into our streams. You didn't, to your credit. A lot of the emails I get address that. You know that we have laws against that. What I said earlier, we can find the waste from animals now rather than flushing it. But nitrate's a big issue in Iowa. The, do you know what the greatest source of nitrate is, Senator Johnson, since you're still standing? Are you asking him to yield? Will you yield? Senator Johnson, do you yield? No. Okay, Senator that's fine. Not yield. That's fine. I don't really need your help. Um, I've got, this is from a 2004 DNR study entitled Nitrogen and Phosphorus Budget for Iowa, Budgets for Iowa and Iowa Watersheds. This report estimated statewide nitrogen inputs. So we're measuring where these nitrates are come from. 
And I'm sure everybody thinks that the number one issue is, is agriculture. Uh, ha happens to be number one is soil mineralization. And what that means, folks, is that we have rich soils. That's why we grow food and corn and soybeans and everything else here. We have high organic matter. The soil mineralizes over time. That process releases nitrates into our rivers and streams. 26% of the nitrogen input is, nitri is uh, soil mineralization. Number two, not surprising, is fertilizer, 25%. Obviously, if we're going to grow corn, we're going to fertilize it. Number three is legume fixation. What's that? Soybeans, alfalfa, peas, a number of crops are legumes. They fix nitrogen from the air. It's not something you apply, not something you buy, it's something that nature does. Number four on the list is atmospheric deposition. Lightning. It's a fact of life. Nitrogen is fixed from the air through the process of lightning. That's atmospheric deposition. Number five, and last on the list, is manure. Remember, these are our inputs. Obviously, we use manure instead of fertilizer. So if we stopped all the, if we, if we, if we did the moratorium now, and tomorrow we outlawed CAFOs, we wouldn't change the dynamic one bit. Not one bit. The facts would remain the same, the amount of nitrogen would remain the same, and we would solve nothing. Now, I'm going to finish up. I said I would be come back to John's statements because I told him I wouldn't cherry pick them. And I won't. Here's John's last statement. That said, Iowa's water quality is not getting any better. He, I feel that Iowa has long-standing water quality problems that deserve attention, including excessive loss of nutrients from farm fields, mismanagement of animal waste, urban runoff stormwater impacts, and alterations to steam channels and corridors. Although water quality impacts exist and will continue, Iowa has water quality and water resources worth protecting and improving. This protection and improvement can only happen through the commitment of resources to educate and assist all Iowans, including state legislators, on how to best protect and conserve the state's water, resource, water and soil resources. Unfortunately, the pace of change in Iowa's water quality whether in agricultural or urban areas is slow, with change occurring on a generational scale of 20 to 40 to 60 years. I'm going to wrap it up. John's last point, I understand. I never, that's why I led Senate File 512. We, needed it, we need to keep working on this issue, and I think it does that. And for those of you that want to spend four to six billion, the numbers heard, just be aware of this. The Iowa State study shows that in Iowa, Iowa's farmers in a 10-year period put in the lowest estimate, the, the low estimate is $1.3 million, a billion dollars of their own money. The high estimate is $2.2 billion. So Iowa's farmers are the ones that are spending the, the big dollars on soil and water conservation. Thank you, Madam, or Mr. President.